In today's show, we're looking ahead to Thursday's action in the NBA, giving streaming options. Michael Bolton, he's streaming right in. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode of Locked On Fantasy Basketball is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty and affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. Big thank you to our friends at Maccas for always being there. I'm loving it. Thank you to you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So let's uh, let's look. Six games on Thursday. Back-to-back streams, nine-catch streams, deep league streams, points league streams. Let's get into it. The first game is the Wizards and the Miami Heat. Both teams played on Wednesday. The table, Montrez Harrell. We're seeing some good numbers still from him, and it was good to see him get back to doing um, doing good things from the free throw line, but Gafford's playing well as well. So I think we saw that real peak from Harrell and the 30-plus minutes a night he was getting, and we're seeing that come back to where, where it's going to be the rest of the year. So let's see what he's able to do here, and I'm especially watching that free throw percentage. While the future MVP, Kyle Kuzma, I talked about him on the waiver wire show earlier today. I do not believe that he is going to remain must roster. Guys like Denny Avdia are pushing for minutes. Rui Hachimura... I guess we'll come back. Actually, at this point, I literally don't even know whether he will. But Kuzma's value, when everything's going his way, is still not that great. So let's see if he can actually change my mind. He won't, but let's see if he can change my mind here. Well, for the Heat, will Bam Adebayo play? He did not play on Wednesday. Or actually, for that matter, will Kyle Lowry play? Both of those guys were out. Is it just scheduled rest because it's a back-to-back and Bam's dealing with his sore knee and Kyle Lowry's dealing with being old? Maybe. We will see to see whether both of these guys return to action and how they look if they do return to action. The second game we take a look at is the Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavs are obviously in real trouble at the moment, but the Warriors are flying, absolutely flying. So I always want to watch Steph. He's actually, is he? He is, yeah. He's the most fun player in the NBA, I would say. Um, And he's on absolute fire. We always want to watch him, but I want to see John Kaminga, who has played some really, really good defense, He's earning Kerr's trust and getting rotation minutes. Steals and blocks are becoming useful for 18 to 20 team leagues. I don't think it's ever going to get to a stage where he you know, cracks the seal of a, of a 12-teamer, but I want to see how he goes. I also want to see Draymond Green, who is playing at a really high level, Defensive Player of the Year type level again for Draymond. Um, and it is reflecting a little bit in fantasy, but I still think he's got more fantasy upside than we've seen from him so far this year. Well, for the Cavs, we don't know about Jared Allen. We know uh, Evan Mobley will be out. Will they play Kevin Love on the back-to-back? I want to watch Darius Garland, who I do think is their best player. Well, maybe it's Mobley. Um, Garland is you know, trying to carry things at the moment with so many guys out. And then the discman, C.D. Osman, who everything was primed for a big role for him on Wednesday, and it didn't happen. And that was weird. Is he still worth a stream on Thursday? Yeah. Let's see if he can do something and maintain a level of consistency that really has plagued him throughout his career. The Clippers and the Grizzlies. Eric Bledsoe is playing at a really high level at the moment, and he does deserve 12-team league value. Let's see what his playing time looks like, especially with the fact that Terrence Mann is questionable and Nick Batum is doubtful with that Achilles issue that saw him play just two seven-minute stints on Tuesday. Asked after the game, Ty Lue, yeah, is he all right? Yeah, he's fine. Well, he's so fine that he's not playing on Thursday, so that's great. So who's going to replace Batum? Obviously, Marcus Morris is out. Terrence Mann might be out. Is the Duck, Luke Kennard, going to move in and play at the three? Well, actually, you know, who's going to play at the four? Like, uh, the whole lineup is is weird. Are we going to get BJ Boston extra minutes? Serge Barker remains out. It's some really interesting things to see how they will replace Batum in this rotation. While for the Grizzlies, we also want to see Dylan Brooks. Will he get to 20 shots? Will he do them at a decent efficiency? Will he provide steals, which he has in the first couple of games? I want to see how he's used. And then by um, elaboration or by expansion onto that, what that means for Melton and what that means for Des Bain. 
And then Jaron Jackson Jr., who is, I think, playing at a pretty high level. Usage is high. Rebounds are up from where they've been in the past. Um, foul trouble is always the thing we want to watch, but I think he's still getting a little bit underrated in the fantasy basketball community. So I'd like to see a little bit more from him or to see how he looks in this game. The Spurs and the Wolves. For the Spurs, I'd like to pay some attention to Keldon Johnson, who still continues to struggle, has up games, up down games. His steal numbers have been improved lately, so that's a good sign. But he still is too inconsistent for me to say, well, he's going to be one of your best 10 or 11 fantasy players in a standard league. Therefore, he's a guaranteed must-hold, must-start guy because he just isn't that player. In points leagues, he is obviously a lot better. I'd like to see some more consistency from him. And I'd also like to see Devin Vassell do something better than the last time. He was shit house in that game. And he'd been awesome before that. I'd like to see Vassell get back to getting those big minutes and producing at a high level. Well, for the Wolves, Naz Reed doesn't look great with his foot at the moment. Um, he did play through it on Wednesday. How they run the Reed, Vanderbilt, McDaniels rotation is going to be interesting. And then also, Goose, Anthony Edwards. We remember last year, he was dreadful with his percentages to start the season and then really good at the end of the season. This year, he's sort of bad again. I'd like to see some of that improve. The usage is great. The minutes are great. The steal rate's good. But I'd like to see a little bit better in terms of overall efficiency with his shooting numbers. The number one spot for you to place your bets, of course, is at Bet Online. More props, lines, and contests than anywhere else. Basketball, football, whatever your sport. Bet Online is the number one spot for you to place that action. So head to the new updated desktop or the mobile site and sign up today using the promo code LOCKDOWN and you get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. From basketball, football, the NHL, boxing, right to UFC, or your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of all of the great offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. Next up, we'll look at the Sixers and the Nuggets. Still no Embiid, no Thibault, Danny Green's out. So, are we going to get another big Shake Milton game? Shake, shake, shake. At the very least, he's a stream option, and he's going to, you would think, have to start in this scenario. And then Andre Drummond, who was absolutely pitiful in the last game, played 12 minutes because he was just so disgustingly bad. I would imagine that changes, but he's now, like that was against Gobert, and now he has to face Jokic. How's he going to go? It could be a stinker from Drummond, let's be honest. Like Jokic could actually tear him multiple new ones, so much so that he leaks water when he takes a drink. Like That's how bad it could get for Drummond. So I want to see if he can actually you know, figure shit out. Well, for the Nuggets, the big stiffy, Bones Highland. He's not on the injury report after that ankle injury derailed his last game. I still think he's worth a grab. Let's see how he goes. Will Barton doesn't look like he will play. He was listed probable, but now he's doubtful. So it's a big opportunity for Bona and for Monty Morris to put up some big performances. So keep an eye on how they use Highland, how Morris looks, because Morris's last week or so has been really, really impressive. The Raptors and the Jazz. Scotty Barnes. Again, he's not taking any threes at all. And that does reduce his value. We're seeing the usage drop off a bit with this team back at full health. I just want to see where Barnes is going to fit in for the rest of the season, how the priority goes. And then Gaz Trent. Um, oh, where's my sound? Let's go. Nice, Gary! His steal rate has been out of his ass. Obviously, I couldn't have predicted that. I was wrong about him. I might, might end up being right when things regress later on, but he's been really good. He's getting a shit ton of minutes. I don't know whether the Raptors will continue on this small life, and I feel like if someone does get benched to bring in a real center, it probably will be him. But if he can continue this level of shooting, which has been great, and the steal rate, then obviously the value is going to maintain. While for the Jazz, Royce O'Neal just continues to plug along as the most boring man in fantasy, pr producing value, and he's an excellent option for a day like today. I also want to watch Rudy Gobert, who... Um, well, let's hit it anyway. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. I'm going to watch Rudy Gobert because I do think he still gets underrated a bit. His free throw percentage is a real problem. We've seen that time and time again. But um, I just yeah, see him push back to being that top 30, top 20 sort of player. would be good to see him get back to this uh, to that level. Let's, um, let's take a look at some back-to-back -back stream options now. These guys play Thursday and they play on Friday. Isaiah Hartenstein and Luke Kennard. So obviously we're looking at Clippers players and with Batum out and a Barker out, at least one of those games. Some value there. Jeff Green in Denver with Maga Porter Jr. out. Damian Lee for the Warriors. Gary Payton, the doctor for the Warriors. And the big stiffy Bones Highland. They are some guys that you can add 
and play on the Thursday, Friday back-to-back combo. If we're just looking at nine cat options for Thursday only, I like Patrick Beverly, Nazareth Reed, Hal Neto, Luke Kennard, Kentavious Caldwell Pope, the big stiffy himself, Bones Highland, and Isaiah Hartenstein. For deeper formats, these guys are rostered in 10% of leagues or fewer. Naz Reed, Hal Neto, Jeff Green, Damo Lee, Andre Iguodala. Actually, Iguodala's out. I should have mentioned that. Iguodala is out. That might help our John Kaminga options. Um, Brando Clark. I don't mind Kaminga adding into Iguodala's spot there. Or Otto Porter. And then Dougie McDirt as well. The battle of the former Bulls small forwards. And then for points leagues, we're looking at Beverly. We're looking at Desmond Bain, Naz Reed, Monty Morris, Jeff Green, Kevin Love, assuming he plays. Hull Neto and Royce O'Neill. That will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And on YouTube, thumb it up, leave a comment. I'll be back later today with a full recap of all 11 games. And Stephen Silas, I reckon you might get roasted. We'll see about that. We'll talk about that in the recap show later today, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.